Chapter 1 It was cold and dark out in the road, and the rain did not stop for a minute. But in the little living room of number 12 Castle Road, it was nice and warm. Old Mr. White and his son Herbert played chess, and Mrs. White sat and watched them. The old woman was happy because her husband and her son were good friends, and they liked to be together. Herbert's a good son, she thought. We waited a long time for him, and I was nearly forty when he was born. But we are a happy family. And old Mrs. White smiled. It was true. Herbert was young, and he laughed a lot. But his mother and his father laughed with him. They had not got much money, but they were a very happy little family. The two men did not talk because they played carefully. The room was quiet, but the noise of the rain was worse now, and they could hear it on the windows. Suddenly, old Mr. White looked up. Listen to the rain, he said. Yes, it's a bad night, Herbert answered. It's not a good night to be out. But is your friend Tom Morris coming tonight? Yes, that's right. He's coming at about seven o'clock, the old man said. But perhaps this rain... Mr. White did not finish, because just then the young man heard a noise. Listen, Herbert said. There's someone at the door now. I didn't hear a noise, his father answered. But he got up from his chair and went to open the front door. Mrs. White got up too and began to put things away. Mr. White said, Come in, come in, Tom. It's wonderful to see you again. What a bad night. Give me your coat and then come into the living room. It's nice and warm in there. The front door was open, and in the living room, Mrs. White and Herbert felt the cold. Then Mr. White came back into the living room with a big, red-faced man. This is Tom Morris, Mr. White told his wife and son. We were friends when we were young. We worked together before Tom went to India. Tom, this is my wife, and this is our son, Herbert. Pleased to meet you, Tom Morris said. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Morris, Mrs. White answered. Please come and sit down. Yes, come on, Tom, Mr. White said. Over here. It's nice and warm. Thank you, the big man answered, and he sat down. Let's have some whiskey, old Mr. White said. You need something to warm you on a cold night. He got out a bottle of whiskey, and the two old friends began to drink and talk. The little family listened with interest to this visitor from far away and he told them many strange stories. Chapter 2 After some time, Tom Morris stopped talking, and Mr. White said to his wife and son, Tom was a soldier in India for twenty-one years. India is a wonderful country. Yes, Herbert said. I'd like to go there. Oh, Herbert, his mother cried. She was afraid because she did not want to lose her son. I wanted to go to India too, her husband said. But it's better for you here, the soldier said quickly. But you saw a lot of strange and wonderful things in India. I want to see them too one day. Mr. White said. The soldier put down his whiskey. No, he cried. Stay here. 
old Mr. White did not stop. But your stories were interesting, he said to Tom Morris. What did you begin to say about a monkey's paw? Nothing, Morris answered quickly. Well, nothing important. A monkey's paw, Mrs. White said. Come on, Mr. Morris, tell us about it, Herbert said. Morris took his whiskey in his hand, but suddenly he put it down again. Slowly he put his hand into the pocket of his coat and the White family watched him. What is it? What is it? Mrs. White cried. Morris said nothing. He took his hand out of his pocket. The White family watched carefully, and in the soldier's hand they saw something little and dirty. Mrs. White moved back, afraid, but her son Herbert took it and looked at it carefully. Well, what is it? Mr. White asked his friend. Look at it the soldier answered. It's a little paw, a monkey's paw. A monkey's paw, Herbert said, and he laughed. Why do you carry a monkey's paw in your pocket, Mr. Morris? He asked the old soldier. Well, you see, Morris said, this monkey's paw is magic. Herbert laughed again. But the soldier said, Don't laugh, boy. Remember, you're young. I'm old now, and in India I saw many strange things. He stopped talking for a minute, and then he said, This monkey's paw can do strange and wonderful things. An old Indian gave the paw to one of my friends. My friend was a soldier, too. This paw is magic because it can give three wishes to three people. Wonderful, Herbert said. But these three wishes don't bring happiness, the soldier said. The old Indian wanted to teach us something. It's never good to want to change things. Well, did your friend have three wishes? Herbert asked the old soldier. Yes, Morris answered quietly. And his third and last wish was to die. Mr. and Mrs. White listened to the story and they felt afraid. But Herbert asked, And did he die? Yes, he did, Morris said. He had no family, so his things came to me when he died. The monkey's paw was with his things, but he told me about it before he died, Tom Morris finished quietly. What were his first two wishes then? Herbert asked. What did he ask for? I don't know. He didn't want to tell me, the soldier answered. For a minute or two, everybody was quiet. But then Herbert said, And you, Mr. Morris? Did you have three wishes? Yes, I did, Morris answered. I was young. I wanted many things. A fast car. Money. Morris stopped for a minute, and then he said with difficulty, My wife and my young son died in an accident in the car. Without them, I didn't want the money. So in the end, I wished to lose it. But it was too late. My wife and my child were dead. The room was very quiet. 
the White family looked at the unhappy face of the old soldier. Then Mr. White said, Why do you want the paw now? You don't need it. You can give it to someone. How can I give it to someone? The soldier said. The monkey's paw brings unhappiness with it. Well, give it to me, Mr. White said. Perhaps this time it... No, Tom Morris cried. You're my friend. I can't give it to you. Then after a minute he said, I can't give it to you, but of course you can take it from me. But remember, this monkey's paw brings unhappiness. Old Mr. White did not listen, and he did not think. Quickly, he put out his hand, and he took the paw. Tom Morris looked unhappy, but Mr. White did not want to wait. What do I do now? he asked his friend. Yes. Come on, father, Herbert said. Make a wish, and he laughed. The soldier said nothing, and Mr. White asked him again. What do I do now? At first the old soldier did not answer. But in the end he said quietly, OK, but remember, be careful. Think before you make your wish. Yes, yes, Mr. White said. Take the paw in your right hand and then make your wish. But, Tom Morris began. Yes, we know, Herbert said. Be careful. Just then, old Mrs. White stood up and she began to get the dinner. Her husband looked at her. Then he smiled and said to her, Come on, help me. What can I wish for? We need money, of course. Mrs. White laughed, but she thought for a minute, and then she said, Well, I'm getting old now, and sometimes it's difficult to do everything. Perhaps I need four hands and not two. Yes, ask the poor to give me two more hands. OK, then, her husband said, and he took the monkey's paw in his right hand. Everybody watched him, and for a minute he waited. Then he opened his mouth to make his wish. Suddenly, Tom Morris stood up. Don't do it, he cried. The old soldier's face was white. Herbert and his mother laughed, but Mr. White looked at Tom's face. Old Mr. White was afraid, and he put the monkey's paw into his pocket. After a minute or two, they sat down at the table and began to have dinner. The soldier told the family many strange and wonderful stories about India. They forgot the monkey's paw. And because the soldier's stories were interesting, they asked him many questions about India. When Tom Morris stood up to leave, it was very late. Thank you for a very nice evening, Morris said to the family. And thank you for a very good dinner he said to Mrs. White. It was a wonderful evening for us, Tom, old Mr. White answered. Your stories were very interesting. Our life isn't very exciting, and we don't have the money to visit India. So please come again soon. You can tell us some more stories about India. Then the old soldier put on his coat. He said goodbye to the White family and went out into the rain.